Hello, I'm Linda Ann Smith, bringing you another creative arts collaboration. The hashtag for December is Love Winter Art. Today I'm showing how to make two different types of stars out of rolled newspaper tubes. I'll begin with an Elmer's glue stick and a skewer like you make shish kebabs on. And I roll the paper around the skewer. This one's kind of bent, but it really doesn't matter. And secure the end with this glue. I like to use the glossy ads from the newspaper instead of the newsprint type of paper because they're a little bit more durable. Also, you can use magazines, but the glossy ads from the newspaper are wider and so you get a longer tube and it's, you have to roll less tubes. I start out by cutting strips and they should be approximately four inches wide, but it really doesn't matter if you get some less or some more. Um, it's going to come out about the same, but four inches is a pretty comfortable size to work with. Unfold one of the papers and lay it down on a table in front of you. Place the wooden skewer on one of the corners and begin to roll it around the, the skewer. This particular skewer has a little flat place on it. Not For some reason that helps me roll. That's the reason I'm using one that's not uh, completely straight because I just like rolling around this one. It's not necessary to use glue here, but if you have trouble getting started, once you get it started like this, you can put just a little dab of glue there to help you hold that in place, and that'll be, it'll be easier for you to roll the rest of it. One end of the wood needs to protrude from the uh, edge of the paper where you roll it because you'll need that to pull it out later. And you just continue to roll as tightly as you can, not not terribly tightly that you can't get it off the stick, but when you get to the fold, uh, sometimes that gives you a little problem. It tries to backfold on you, so you kind of have to watch that. Make sure that this doesn't happen. You see the problem I had right there. And when you get past the end of the wood, it's fine because you can keep rolling. The paper will hold it in place. You should end up with just the corner of the paper, uh, but sometimes it comes out flat like this. It's okay, but you actually can adjust that by kind of pulling and unwinding a bit and pulling on your paper. But this, it'll turn out okay this way. If you found that you wound it too tightly and it's hard to get, get out of the paper, just give the little wood a turn backwards and that's going to release it. It'll come right out. You'll need several of these, but once you start rolling these and get the hang of it, the, the knack of rolling them, then it's easy to roll them. You can actually roll them sitting in front of the television because you don't even have to have too many supplies. If you notice, the ends here are even, but they aren't all the same size, and that's fine. Also, you should be aware that the ends are not as stable. But when you join these together, that alleviates itself. One end should have, a, the opening should be larger than the other end, but you can play with that and figure that out as you go. Because later to join these, this is what you're going to do. If it's too loose or not a good fit, just take that one away and find one that does work. These are really pretty color tubes and would work for Christmas already, but I kind of want a metallic looking star, so I'm going to use this golden iridescent silver to start painting them, and I paint several at one time. I'm not worried about getting complete coverage, so I'm just going to lay these down and stroke over them as I roll them, and it's going to get all over my non-stick mat, but that's okay. That's what a non-stick mat is for. So I'm brushing them here and there with this silver because I know already that I'm going to use at least two other colors on it. I think about winter arts, I think about children, and children could certainly, depending on their age, help with all or part of this. I don't have to wait for that to dry before I change paint colors, and I'm going to use Radiant Gels Dimensional Paint. It's a permanent paint, it's an acrylic, and I, it's very metallic. And I'm going to use Emperor's Gold to continue painting the same way I did with the silver color. The final color I'm going to add is another color art product, the Radiant Rains again, and it's Indian Copper is the color. I'll use the same method of painting, dabbing here and there. While 
while those dried, I printed a five-pointed star out on copy paper and laid it on my table. It makes a good base to begin with so that I can get the points even. And you lay the tubes, I'm actually extending that tube beyond the top of the star. Lay the tubes down and flatten them out with your finger or some hard uh, bone tool or something like that. Flatten it out and then you bend it at the points to come across just like you were going to draw a star. Basically, you're drawing a star with these tubes. Move the paper down a little so you can see how I, I extend the tube beyond the top. I, that's an insurance that I have plenty to work with. It's been a lot of years since I was a child and I'm trying to remember what my grandmother and I used to make. And we made a lot of things near Christmas. It was all, also my brother's birthday was near Christmas and she'd bring me to her house and we would make something for my brother each year. But it's been a lot of years so I forget uh, the process and I'm kind of reteaching myself the process as I go here. If you flattened all these tubes out to begin with, it would be a whole lot easier. Uh, I'm putting glue now on the places where the tubes cross over each other. And again, another tip here that would have made it easier for me, if you'd use clothespins to hold those little sections together, they wouldn't keep coming apart like they are here. I finally found one clothespin and wised up. It helped a little. But if you don't have clothespins, it doesn't take that long to hold them in place and let them dry. When it does dry, you can remove that clothespin and take the extra little tab that you let stick out at the top of the star when we first began, fold it back and glue it down and put a clothespin there and let it dry. Now you could snip that off, but I opted to make it a little stronger by wrapping it around and folding it back. I know that I want this to hang like an ornament, so I took a little piece of copper wire and bent it into a hanger shape. I'm going to slide that right over this end, and I'm going to weave over that when I begin weaving the newspaper tubes. Now I'll take hold of the extension that was left over from making the original star, and I'm going to bring that around the wire and then up beside Manipulate that tube to skip the first point and go to the second point. Then you wind it around the second point, making sure that that tube lies just inside of the framework that you made to begin with. You'll wind that all the way around the tip of the star and come out on the same side where you began uh, winding it around the tip to begin with. And then you'll skip the next one and you'll do the same thing all the way around. It's time now for me to add a second tube and this one's much smaller uh, and so I pushed it way down inside and you do the same thing. Wind it all the way around the tip, skip one tip, wind it all the way around that next tip, skip the tip making sure that the tubes come just inside each other as you go and adding more and more tubes as you go and I like to push them in just as far as I can get them to go up inside. When you get back to that hanger you know that you're right where you were when you first started and you'll want to come under that uh, tip when you wind and just start doing the same thing all the way around for a third layer of tubes. I didn't bother to flatten the tubes at this point, but as I said before, if you flatten them all at one time, I think it would be easier. It would make it easier to wrap the pointed area. When you flatten these with your fingers, it maintains a certain roundness to it, so it really doesn't distract from the appearance of the ornament when you're finished. When I think I have enough layers on the star, I kind of push them into the place and then I go to the back and I glue the end. This tube just happened to come out just about perfect. Glue the end, hold it on with a clothespin, let it dry. This star has a nice color combination, but if you wanted to, you wouldn't have to paint like I did in the beginning. You could spray paint the entire star when you get finished, or you could use a brush to paint it. On my next star, I used a brush and 
brushed on some of Deco Art's neon color. And you're all finished with that one and you have your pattern left over in perfect shape so you can start your second one. One of the things I want to mention here is that on the method where I'm skipping a point, uh, it probably needs to be odd numbers of points like a five pointed star. I don't think a six pointed star would work on skipping the point because you would be doing the same three each time. So keep that in mind. Although with the next method that I'm going to show you, I believe you can use a six pointed star. I haven't tried that, but I think it would be worth the experiment to see. I'm starting the next star the very same way that I did the first one. Got it glued together with the basic framework, and now I'm going to show you a different wrapping method. I like both stars, but I really think this one is a little more impressive when you're finished. I apologize about going in and out of the camera. This would be much easier if my camera tripod weren't in the way, but I have to keep moving it back and pulling the long tube back in. You see I've gone from point to point this time. I go to the points, I wrap all the way around and go to the very next point. Now at first this looks like, well how's this going to be a star? It looks like a, a um, pentagon and it does turn out a little bit pentagon shaped but the star pattern definitely comes in as you add more layers. So you go around each tip, completely around each tip coming back out on the same side where you started winding and going to the very next tip. On this one, you go under the first row. If you've got your first row in, you're going to go under each time. So if you're careful about wrapping the tips right on the tip end, then you'll find that your uh, it, it's just almost mechanical. You can just go right around these fairly fast, tucking it up under that first tip, adding more tubes as you need them. If you keep wrapping right under the last tip that you wrapped, then it'll just automatically fall into place for you. Once you get the pattern down, it's an amazingly easy way to weave. You just wrap around the tip, go to the next tip, wrap all the way around the tip, go to the next tip. your tubes just don't want to fit into each other properly so what you do is you take the end of the tube and kind of fold it together pinch it together so that it will go up into the tube that you where you want it to go run out of room to weave any more between the star, it's probably about time to quit. So just keep weaving until you fill in all the space. And you see how the star formed. It's a chunkier looking star. The two stars begin exactly the same way, but they end up looking very, very different. When you finish, you just glue on the back like I did with the first star. You just glue it in place on the back, tuck it in. Most middle grade children to high school will have the dexterity to roll the tubes and do the weaving, but you also might include younger children by having them paint the tubes while you make them. Remember, you're not just making ornaments, you're making memories when you're working with children. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel uh, if you haven't already done that. Uh, comments and shares are always appreciated. I'd also like to encourage you to go to your YouTube search bar and type in hashtag lovewinterart. 
The CAC Facebook group is does a hashtag event every single month, and we're gaining new members every month. Hopefully, you'll find some uh, new artists that you've never even seen before. Thank you for watching, and Merry Christmas!